The Shadow Brand has been around for a short while now, and previously I had picked up two of their older model lights. These are JM07 Pros in a stone white version, as well as a um, what was supposed to be a gunmetal gray. But this particular model actually got pulled back because of the finishing. As you can see here, the throat area, the heat fin area, is completely off. Um, so they had actually discontinued this. So while they were nice lights, um, wasn't overly whelmed with them. Um, so kind of just set them aside on my shelf for a while. But recently, I was presented with the opportunity to review a few of their newer lights, of which um, the one in this video is the SL3. This one features Tri XML U2s pumping out 1500 lumens for about 1.6 hours uh, on a 26650 size battery. Now it does feature an electronic switch, so. Uh, but before I dive into that, let me just cover the light itself first. Um, I'm not aware of any AR coating as you can see there in the reflection. It does feature a stainless steel bezel that is removable. Now this reflector is actually um, decently deep. Uh, so by comparison, I'm actually going to grab a tiny monster here. So I'm not sure if that comes out, the depth perception comes out, but um, hopefully at this angle you can see uh, the TM-11 isn't all that deep, thus it really has been the raining flood monster due to the relatively shallowness of those reflectors. So of course, the, the offset of that is that it doesn't throw very far. Now by size comparison, you can see the SL3 is a fairly compact light. Um, well, of course, it does utilize a different battery mechanism. The TM-11 runs on four 18650 size batteries, whereas this runs on a single 26650, or with adapter, it can also run on a single 18650 that can sustain um, four and a half amps uh, current draw. Sustain. So, with another comparison is the Sunway Man T60C. Now, this one did have a deeper reflector than the TM11, but from this angle, I'm not sure again if you could see that, but it looks like the SL3 is just a smidge um, deeper. So, it actually does feature a pretty decent throw for this size light. Now I'll get back to the beam patterns later to compare the two, but diving back into the SL3. Overall, the light reminds me of the original LumaPower D-Mini um, series. I don't know if you, know, you folks watching this recall that, that light, but if not, just do a search for it. So, And there are, you know, I guess these design motifs here. Uh, I don't really feel any significant sharpness, so it does feel like it has been properly deburred. Um, and over here, there does look like what it is to be an anti roll ring, but that is really more designed than functional because you know that part of the body is actually um, when you rest the light flat here, it does actually touch the uh, flat surface, so it's really rolling on this end as well as the head. Now the light does come apart in two pieces, so there's really the head, and the tube is actually the battery tube is a single solid piece. This is a 26650 size battery. Uh, by comparison, here's an AWIMR 18650 battery. And yes, my wrapper is broken, so I'm going to have to get that fixed soon. Now, how it is able to utilize this is that uh, what should be included is one of these spacers. Right, so you plug that in. I thought that this was particularly nice because it actually featured O-rings here that uh, aid anti-rattle. So you dump that in and then you dump the battery. So that's how it is able to accommodate and center the 18650 battery. By contrast, I believe I received um, this particular one. It's just really sort of like a simple PVC pipe. Um, I think this was included with one of the original JM07 Pros. But as you can see the difference, um, this one actually does still produce some type of rattle because there is some free play here. So overall, I thought that this was a pretty particularly well designed um, spacer. Okay. Now, the back here has what I thought was a rather peculiar design. This was a design, um, but it's not simply the anodizing removed. This actually, if I'm not mistaken, there is a hole there. So peering into the bottom, you can't really see clearly. I'll try to take some pictures later, but if you pull that spring out, 
you will actually see that this is an actual physical plug. Um, it was mentioned that this was by design, but I just thought that that was rather peculiar. I would have actually preferred um, one single solid piece with that, maybe the anodizing remove, because you know, I don't know what that does to the water resistance, but I'll test that out later as well. Um, featured here is what I've, actually the first time I'm seeing this is um, a rather unique implementation to route the lanyard. So you can see it's actually routed through the body directly here. There's a pass-through here on either side, and then the lanyard is simply stretched, uh, I guess, kind of permanently because if you wanted to remove this, you would actually have to disassemble this whole thing. So, um, can't say, you know, I'm fond of the design because on a few occasions when I've tried to set the light down, this is semi stiff, so it has gone in the way. Uh, but again, not a big deal. Some of you may like it, some of you may not. I don't know, but that's uh, subjective. All right. Now, before we get back into the UI, uh, GUI of the light, I did want to, sorry, UI of the light, I did want to point out that the head, while it does feature this nodule, it actually cannot accept flat, um, flat top cells, which I have here. That is actually a magnet that is included with the light. Um, it is required because, and you probably won't see it here because of the contrast, this white part is actually protruding past this. So this, uh, this uh, contact point is actually recessed. I thought that that was quite a peculiar design and I, I just really am not fond of it. I would prefer to see them either include a spring or have that positive nodule raised on a uh, future revision. Now the thread is actually not um, square cut, but I didn't really have too much of a t uh, hard time thre getting this threaded back on. Um, this is actually all of their newer lights. I've actually noticed they've used some type of oil instead of um, heavy grease for the threads. All right, so now time to fire it up. Oh, sorry. Let me actually cover the box here. It comes in this generic um, echo packaging that features, you know, again, just a generic label that someone hand wrote the model number. It does come with spear rings and a glass, and it did um, come in that foam sleeve there. Now, this is an electronic switch. Uh, one needs to press and hold for, I guess, approximately two seconds. It does require a fair amount of force and the light will always turn on and high. There is no memory. Now to cycle through the modes is simply another click. goes into medium. Actually, I'm going to grab a piece of paper here with uh, lines to help the camera focus. And then low. All right, at any point in time with the light on or off, you can double click to access uh, activate strobe instantly. But of course, it does actually cycle through it. Um, so meaning which, whichever mode you're in, it will actually cycle to the next level first and then hit strobe. To deactivate the strobe, just simply click once. I would have preferred that strobe be tightened up a little, just as with the uh, Elite S1A I recently reviewed. I feel like to access strobe, it's a little fairly easy to do, right? So if you want to cycle through the modes fast, you could actually accidentally activate strobe. To shut off the light, you actually need to hold and depress for, again, I guess over a second, so close to two seconds. Now, I believe someone on the forum had actually complained that you know they weren't too fond of the the on to access it because they would prefer to access instant on, right? So to do that, you just simply need to click three times because again, with the light off, you could actually enter strobe immediately with two clicks. One more click will force it to go into high. So, all right. So if you do that very fast, hopefully you can minimize the strobe. But again, it does take um, some time if you actually had to hold and press to turn the light instantly on. I would actually like to see them revise this UI if at all possible um, to mimic like the zebra lights. I really am very a big fan of the zebra light UIs uh, because you could pretty much access either low or high um, with the light off. Now by comparison, just to show you the beam pattern. Now this is on the lower setting and the tiny monster on the lower setting as well. And to give you an idea of the, the beam pattern, of course I will take the my indoor shots and include that, but as you can see at the same height you could already see that the uh, tiny monster is a, a much floodier beam profile. And aiming that down a little bit, 
you can see again the center it is geared a little bit more towards throw than uh, versus the TM11. Um, the T60 ACS beam compares um, a little bit more closer with the SL3. Of course, I gotta remember how to cycle this. Okay. And again, you can see it is still a floodier profile versus the SL3. And then from the same distance, while a little tighter than the TM11, it is just a bit floodier versus the SL3, meaning the T60CS. So again, overall, this light is um, provides decent flood, but it is really geared for pretty good throw. Now, those three XMLs, because again, given how uh, deep that reflector is, immediately converges the three um, beams into one at a fairly close distance. And again, to shut off the light, two seconds. So overall, um, fit and finish has definitely improved um, since the uh, 2JM07 Pros, although between the two JM07s, the Stone White was definitely um, in better shape. Maybe I'm just letting the, the finish on the, uh, the gunmetal version uh, bias my viewpoints, but again, I feel overall the construction is fairly, fairly good on this light. Um, there was one thing I do notice, and you could probably pick that up here, is these model specs on the finishing. I'm not sure exactly what that is either. It's um, a flaw in the finishing or whatnot. I will find out, but um, it is noticeable, although I don't know. Personally, it doesn't bother me, but again, it may bother some who um, would prefer a, a um, consistent finish on their lights. All right. So as you can see, this flat base, it is tail sand and bulb, as mentioned. On a few occasions, I've had, had this lanyard um, catch on it. So, oh, let's see, there you go. Okay, but it is tail sandable. All right, so another shot at the reflector. Overall, fairly, fairly smooth um, with no true defects that I could find, although maybe around the edges here, but it didn't contribute any artifacts to the beam pattern that I could discern. Right, and again, I, I really, really enjoy this size. It, it has just been a um, tremendous joy to pocket, like, you know, again, about, I actually measure roughly um, 1600 lumens, just slightly above that. But, um, you know, that's a lot of a, uh, power to pack in a reasonably compact form. All right, so again, just another quick comparison with the TM11 size-wise. And with the T60CS size-wise. Okay, so this is the, actually the first of um, a bunch of shadow lights that I will be reviewing, but thus far I am fairly impressed, especially with this one in particular. Um, it probably has become one of my favorite uh, new compact lights. Alright, so that concludes this review, and again, as part of FTC disclosures, this uh, light was provided by sbflashlights.com for review, and thanks again for watching.